and welcome to this month's tutorial that is the patch of Poises Square. This is a brand new square in the What Were You Thinking game family. Uh, we have done one before me and Kay and this time I decided to team up with the one and only Jill from Gumleaf Crochet to design this gorgeous little square for you. This is a really fun one. This measures 20 by 20 centimeters and she started off with the first round. I did the second, she did the third, I did the fourth and so on and so on. So this was really the signing on the go and to know that something that you, you have no idea when you begin can end up being something like this is just mind blowing. So I'm really, really happy. Thank you so much Jill for playing this game with me and sharing all your lovely persona and design ideas and everything with me. I have had a blast getting to know you even better than before. So, and also a huge thank you for to Yul's daughter who actually came up with the name for the square. Absolutely lovely, Patch of Poises. <laughs> so before we begin, I just want to say that as in all of our tutorials and patterns, we at Sisters in Stitch use US terminology. So US terms throughout all the videos as you can see here. So without further ado, let's begin. So to make this square exactly as I have done it, like this, you will need white for your color A, icy blue for color B, eucalyptus color C, pearl D, and then this lovely golden as E. You will also need a three millimeter hook a darning needle and a scissor. But of course you can choose whatever colors you want to. If you want to use more colors, less colors, maybe just one color like this one. This is We Are Knitters, the cotton and the four millimeter hook. It's huge. Um, but yeah, that's really all that you need. Some yarn that you love to work with, a hook that goes with it and the possibility to fasten off with a darning needle and a scissor. So grab your things and meet me up for round number one. So for round A, we are starting with two double crochets together and I always do it with a fake double crochet. You can do a chain two or three if you want to. So just do it like that and then go in and do my second one and then work them together like that. Chaining one and then I'm doing exactly the same but with real uh, two double crochets together. So we are going to do this in a total eight times. We have two now and we need six more. So just go ahead and work your two double crochets together and chaining one, one, two. And this will give it kind of a floral look or a star look in the center which is so, so cute. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. And the last one, eight. There we go. And don't forget to do the little chain one before finishing off because otherwise it will be really tight when we are going to work our next round. So simply put the tail down to the back and then either close with an invisible join to the second stitch, which is the chain one in this case, or slip stitch into the top of your two double crochets together. And if you had done a chain two start, then do it in the first double crochet here, okay? So it should be one stitch and not two. That's the look we are going for. Okay, so I have a little thing to think about for you. When you are doing an invisible join, please be careful when fastening off that you don't tug on it too much. You want it to be loose as a normal chain stitch and two double crochets work together. So in my case here, I have been really, really careful not to tug too much on it. And it actually, you can't barely tell that this is my joining point just because I kept it a little bit loose and just let it rest on top of there. Okay, so meet me up for next round. 
So for round number two, I have chosen to use this lovely, almost icy blue. I think the color's name is actually ice blue. Yes, it is. Uh, and it's just gorgeous. I love it. I used it for the original square too as my second color and it's just, yeah, it pops. So we are going to begin in any chain one space that are placed between the two double crochets together and preferably not where you closed your round. We're spreading the ends out. So begin here with two single crochets into the same space. We're gonna put a lot of stitches in here. And then we are chaining three. One, two, three. And then going back into it and doing two more single crochets. So we have like seven stitches here in total, but it's gonna look cute, so just carry on. <laughs> so around the next Two double crochets to work together, work a front post single crochet and that's the repeat. So we are going to do this two more times. So work two single crochets into the chain space, chain three and then two more single crochets in there like that. And then a front post single crochet around the next stitch pulling it upwards and really amplifying the, the pedals here that we are working with. Love front posts. There we go. So two single crochets, chain three, and then two more single crochets. And the front post. So you are going to do this for as many <laughs> pedals you have left. So one, two, three, four, five in my case um, yeah <laughs> that's what you're going to do so two single crochets chain three two single crochets into the same chain space or around the chain space and then a front post single crochet around your pedals here so do that and meet me up to finish the round Okay, so <laughs> I got a little bit in my own head and actually snipped off the yarn but you should have ended with a front paste single crochet around the last uh, two double crochets work together. And then simply just join either with a slip stitch into the first stitch or as I'm doing an invisible join to the second stitch. So for round three, we are beginning in any front post single crochet of the round. So just work a standing double crochet or a chain two or three to start the height of your double crochets, okay? And then chaining one and then back into the same stitch, another double crochet. So this is the V stitch, so cute. So now we are listening to Jill and skipping the first single crochet here, but put a back post single crochet around the next one. That is right before the chain three, okay? So this can be a little bit fiddly, putting back post stitches around single crochets always are, but just pull it back as you can tell, and then chain one. And then around the next single crochet, so we're skipping the chain three, but you can go in here and around, grab the yarn and just finish your back post single crochet, like that. So this one will hang in front of your work and your chain one should be placed behind it. So it's like a little, we will use this space for other stitches to come. So after you have done that, just repeat the same thing. So a double crochet, chain one and a double crochet into the same front post single crochet from the previous round. So also known as a V-stitch. <laughs> Skip the next one and then work a back post single crochet around the next and chain one skip the chain three ah fiddly I told you there we go and just we are just anchoring this so keep the back post stitches quite tight because you want them lying right on the back here you don't want them to poke up 
you just want them to sit there. So I'm going to do one more with you and then I'm gonna leave you to finish this on your own. So V-stitch into the front post and then work, skip the next and work a back post single crochet around the next single crochet. Make sure to pull it tight, chain one, skip the chain three and work another back post single crochet around the next stitch. And then just repeat this. So as you can tell, it's going to be so cute. This is the attachment points for our next stitches. So yeah, keep on doing that and finish with either slip stitch to the first stitch or an invisible join to the second, okay? Have fun. Okay, so before we begin our next round, just take your time and pull these chain three spaces from round two, two forward and upward a little bit so they don't stick to the back and also it will line up your back post stitches nicely because we're going to work into these chain one spaces and if you have these uh, pulled to the front it's so much easier I promise you. So that is how it should look and for this round I'm going with a pretty pink and it was so funny because when she had finished her round number three I was like what <laughs> am I gonna do with this? I expected her to work in the chain three spaces, but she chose to leave them. And so I kind of think it's a lovely little like embellishment thing. So I was going to leave them. So what I did was just keep on going with the V stitches, but I will not place them into the V stitch. I will place them here in the chain one space. So between two back post single crochets. So begin here with either a chain two start or a standing double crochet. Chain one and then work another double crochet into the same space, like that. And then we are going to chain one, skip the lay of the V-stitch and working only in the, around the chain one space of the V-stitch. We're going to make a puff. And this one is a chain yarn over three, sorry. So two and three. And then close with the chain. So just like that. And then chain one. And then work another, we are skipping, okay, so, so to make it really, really simple for us, we're only working in the chain one spaces of this round, okay? So skip all the other stitches, just the chain one spaces. So working behind the chain three from round number two and into the chain one, work a V-stitch, which is a double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and then chain one. And then we're working into the next chain one space, which is in the V-stitch, a yarn over three times puff. So one, two, and three. Okay, so I decided to switch the color and I went for a pearl instead of this really bright pink. Um, I think it looks so much nicer. This is so much more me. <laughs> so we have been working these stitches in the chain one space behind the chain three here. And then we're working a puff into the V stitch with a chain one in between. And that is all we are doing. And I'm actually, I don't know what it was this time, but I changed my puffs to be a yarn over times four. So you can do a, a yarn over times three or four, depending on what yarn you use. If it's looking a little bit flat, then just go ahead and add a yarn over, okay? So I'm just going in and doing one, two, three, and four because then I have a nice body to work with here. There we go. And then chain one. So just keep on doing this all the way around. A V stitch placed in the chain one behind the chain three. Chain one and then work a puff. So when you have done your last puff, don't remember <laughs> don't, don't forget um, to make a chain one before closing, okay? That little one makes all the difference in how 
it will fold and lay flat and such. Okay, so never forget the very last stitch <laughs> of a round because then it will be really, really tight going forward. Nothing is unrepairable, but yeah. So for this round, that is Jill round. I have chosen to use my color A again. We are simply going to frame what we have done. So we are going to begin in any chain one space of the V stitches, okay? So begin with a standing single crochet and then directly work another single crochet. You're going to recognize this repeat. Chain three and then work two more single crochets into this little chain space. There we go. So cute. <laughs> and then we're going to skip the legs of the V-stitch and work two single crochets into the chain one space. That is between the puff and the V-stitch. And then we are going to skip the puff and work two single crochets into the next chain space. And this is what we will do all the way around. And when you are finished, this will look a little bit like a snowflake <laughs> or a passion fruit flower, as Jill said. Let's see. <laughs> I'm living in the north, so I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking snowflakes. And she, who is placed in Australia, thinks about star fruits, uh, passion fruit flowers. <laughs> I had to check what it was called, but it's so fun. Me and Jill had so much fun here. We were already talking about not knowing what the other one would do. And it was, I, I stopped guessing. <laughs> I stopped guessing it uh, because I had no idea what she would come up with. Uh, because in my case, this is the fun part of being two people crocheting together and not planning what you'll do. Because if it was me, I would have done like, my plan was to, Maybe put a cluster stitch in here, making it into a flower. And then, of course, doing single crochets around the chain space, but maybe a front post to really highlight the puff. And yeah, you know, it's really... And then she goes and makes chain spaces and single crochets. And I was like, what? But it's so much fun because you learn how other people design and how other people see crochet and how they see stitches and how learning new things and that you don't always have to put post stitches around uh, puffs and stuff because they are visible without them too and it's just nice with this flat line so she made me relax with my front post for this one <laughs> which was lovely so i will ask her what she picked up from me and then we can compare notes to her and i <laughs> But yeah, expect the unexpected. That is my strategy with this game. Just you never know what the other one will do. And sometimes the other one will do. They will think like you thought. But then they thought, this is a game. I'm going to spice things up. I'm going to do something different. Which also pushes you into like a new direction of your own style. So this can really help you free up your crocheting design kind of game um, just because when you design one row and don't have to think about the consequences when it comes to doing the next row I think it's liberating I think it is uh, scary too because you have a plan and then you can see that plan just go go somewhere completely else <laughs> um, but it's really fun and now I have talked all the way around, so I will just, look, it's my snowflake. So cute. Or star fruit, passion fruit flower. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna fasten off and then meet you up for round number six, okay? Okay, so for round number six, we are doing our little leaf kind of thing. Looks like, like these, this section is what's going to happen with a little peekaboo color coming through. And we are going to begin in any space between two sets of single crochets. Okay, so right above the puff. 
And we are going to go into the space. And with the space, this I always find hard. And it was definitely hard when I began. I did not understand what they were saying. Um, in all the video tutorials and such that I follow. But when you're going into a stitch, you go into the head. And when you're going around the stitch, you go around the stitch. <laughs> for, for real, <laughs> you're going around the stitch. Show me. There we go. But in this case, we are going through the stitch to go in the space in between. So it will sit here, right above the other stitch. I will show you. Okay. So just take your hook. We're going to do a standing double crochet. So if you're doing a chain start and slip stitch and then chain two or three to the height of a double crochet. But you're going in here and you're not going into the head. Not just like that. You don't want that bar below. You are going in entirely. So what I do, I do it like this and it also catches the leg of the other one. Because that makes me have it placed right on top here. And now I don't know what stitch I did. Wait. <laughs> okay, redo. So you're going in. As I said, you're grabbing the leg here too. And just pull up your yarn. Pull through two loops on the hook and then pull through two loops on the hook. And as you can tell, this is not in the stitch. It's not in that stitch. It's around this space laying. There you can see the little other leg of that stitch. It's not placed in that stitch at all, but around the space. I hope this makes sense. So just chain one and then repeat this five times. So we are going to have five double crochets with five chain ones in between around this space. So one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, I just needed to double check something. <laughs> so what we are going to do now, we have our chain one here. And we are going to go, we are going to skip the next four stitches for the first half. So that is the third and fourth single crochet here. So one off a repeat. One, two, three and four, which is exactly all the single crochets actually. And then we're going to separate the four single crochets that we placed here, the second and the third, and then just go from the back around and make a slip stitch. Okay? Like that. Because then you have this little piece of color peeking through and it's so cute. So just chain one and then do exactly the same around the next space between two sets of double crochet, of single crochets. Oh my, I'm thinking too much now. <laughs> I should just do, um, but this is all you do for this round. That was my evil invention of going between stitches. <laughs> it's so hard to explain, but it does look so much prettier than going into one of those. Because it's, yeah, it's like, like this. I think it looks really, really, really gorgeous. And it's, it brings the, the leaf section here closer to the puff below and kind of like skipping the whites here. I don't know how to better explain it, but I think it's aesthetically really, really lovely. So yeah, this is all we are going to do. We are going to separate those two, get from the back around the space and just work a slip stitch, tighten and then chain one. So you should have this little color peeking through. And then just go ahead and make five double crochets with a chain one in between around the space between the single crochets. A peekaboo slip stitch here with a chain in between. And then just around and around we go. Okay, so this is how it should look when you have finished this round. So just simply pull these up if you're feeling like they are soaking down a bit. You'll want to make your work in those for the next round, so <laughs> don't worry. And this is what the back looks like. So, so, so cute. 
I really love this project. It's so much fun. And yeah, let's see what she has in store for us for round number seven. So well done. And now we are up to Jill's round again. Place ours here. We can see how they match up like that. <laughs> and we are now placing into these little chain tree spaces. These lovely little floral clusters and just go around really effortlessly. Just a slow and nice round, I think. And then we are doing this last framing and then we're about to do the squaring out part, okay? So these two rounds are the very last that we are going to go in a circle. So enjoy those. Really love a square too, but it's nice to, to have this center part, this little center medallion one would say. And for the flowers this time, last time I did white as you could see. Now I'm going to try something and let's see if I like it. Um, but I have chosen this. This is so much gold that it's ridiculous. This is like a darker brown kind of gold turn. And I'm really fascinated by it, but I haven't used it almost at all. So let's see if it can work for this one. <laughs> it can be fun. So we are going to begin this round with our lovely goal. Or colors A, B, C, D, E. <laughs> Color E. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I will have to correct myself otherwise. In any given chain tree space from round number five. <laughs> so here we are going to work our two double crochets together and it goes really well the first one <laughs> there we go you can also do a slip stitch chain two and then a double crochet that counts as you're starting two double crochets together okay so just do that and then chain one we're going to do that two more times so two double crochets together chain one two double crochets together chain one and then we're doing oh, one more two double crochets together but instead of chaining one after it we are going to chain two there we go and then we are skipping all other stitches but the very top double crochet so it's the third one of our fan from round number six and just do a single crochet. And then we're chaining two again. And then we are repeating our two double crochets together, chain one times three plus one, two double crochets together. So this is quite simple. If you made it through the first rounds, you can definitely just take it easy and enjoy this ride too. There we go. And then just finish with one double crochet two together. You should have four of those in each chain three space around, okay? Now chain two, find the middle double crochet, the third one, and work a single crochet in the top and chain two. So easy peasy lemon breezy. So just go ahead and finish that. Meet me up for the next round. So for round number eight, we are beginning in any chain space prior to a single crochet, okay? So we are going to work two single crochets around that chain space. And then a front post single crochet around the single crochet and two single crochets into that next chain space. Really simple beginning, right? <laughs> So the next thing we will do, I will zoom in a little bit, is to work a half front post half double crochet around the two double crochets work together, like that. And then we're doing a single crochet in the space between the chain one space here. And then just repeat it. So a front post half double crochet around the next cluster and a single crochet in the space between. 
front post half double crochet around the cluster there we go and the single crochet around the chain one space and the front post half double crochet so that is the repeat I will do it one more time with you really simple and calming round so you just remember two single crochets around the chain two space a front post single crochet around the single crochet like that two single crochets around the next chain two space a front post half double crochet around the cluster remember to always grab enough yarn <laughs> and there we go and then a single crochet around the chain one space so we're just repeating all the way for all the chain one spaces we are placing a single crochet around them and for all chain two spaces we're placing two single crochet around them so easy to remember and there we go so yeah keep on doing this all the way around and meet me up for the next so for this round we are gonna work on these lovely pink first sections that you can tell here so this is the beginning of actually squaring the square out <laughs> so now we are going from the medallion to the square and we are actually gonna begin in any given first front post half double crochet that is placed around a cluster so just find one that you didn't close on I'm just feeling it because I can feel where I ended <laughs> yeah, that's my way of doing it and then I'm just gonna start off with a standing double crochet you can of course slip stitch and chain two or three to the same height if you want to okay and then we're going to do another double crochet but in the next stitch and then we are working a half double crochet over the next two stitches so one and two there we go after you have done that you should do a single crochet in the next three stitches so one two and three and here you should know that your your checkup point is that you should now have covered all the stitches placed within the flower okay so we are skipping the next two stitches which are these two in the around the chain and chaining two and then we're working a front post single crochet around the front post single crochet like that and then chaining two again skipping the next two stitches which are the single crochets and then I need to double check we are working one single crochet over the next three stitches so we are going to mirror what we just did on this side so just flattening it out a little bit this curve so woo, come on there we go thank you three and then two half double crochets the next two stitches so one half double crochet in each of the next two stitches okay and then two double crochets over the next two stitches there we go like that look we are starting to build an edge here <laughs> and now we are going to chain two skip the next two stitches and work a V stitch this is a larger v-stitch than the ones we have done before so to do this one we do a double crochet oh sorry it's placed in the front post single crochet from the previous round okay and then we're chaining three so double crochet chain three double crochet all in this front post single crochet and then chaining two again skipping the next two stitches and work two double crochets in the next two stitches one double crochet in the next two stitches why is this so hard today I don't know uh, a half double crochet in the next two stitches so one 
and two. And then we're working a single crochet over the next three stitches. So one, two, or not over, in. <laughs> There's so many ways you can say these on, these things on. But as you can tell, it's looking good already, right? So I will do, I have already begun that repeat. So I will finish this repeat with you. Uh, and then I'll tell you what I did again. So you just to make sure. So here we are, we are chaining two, skipping two, working a front post single crochet around the front post single crochet. Need to go in there to really get, get to it. Chain two and then mirror the other side. So single crochet in the next three stitches. Two, three, two, a half double crochet in the next two stitches. And then a double crochet in the next two. Oops, there we go. Chain two. And then in the next front post, work a large V stitch. I think we're calling it a large V stitch. So a double crochet, chain three, and a double crochet. Chain two, and skip the next two, and so on and so on. So when you are finished, it should look like this on that side too. <laughs> so you should have four corners placed equally along here. And yeah, it's going to start squaring out as I said. So really excited. This is a fun round. Just keep on reflecting, <laughs> repeating the reflection of the other side of where you are and you will be fine. Okay. Well done, I hope you have a square now, <laughs> or a square shape uh, kind of make here. And what we will do now is an independent round, it's marked so in the pattern, which is these little corners. And you can work them as independent rounds, but you can also, I'm sorry Yil, I haven't checked this with you. <laughs> but I actually, when I was working with my solid color square, I made this in one solid color too. I actually, I didn't want to break the yarn because it, it didn't, it wouldn't affect the design that much. Uh, and by doing so, this will be sturdier than a loose corner. This is, this is the section that we're working on. So I actually did the corner and then slip stitched in each stitch around and then just carried on. Do you know what I mean? So I just worked the corner and then slip stitch in all the stitches, the chain spaces and everything up to the next corner, made that corner and just kept on going. So this is a matter of taste. If you want to do them as independent, you can. I have not tried it in, in a color, uh, colored square, so I don't know how it will look. It is a little bit tricky to work in the stitches after you have placed a slip stitch in them. I used a chunky yarn for the solid color one and I think that is why it worked out good. So if you are to use it on a uh, tight cotton like this maybe just place the slip stitches into the front loops so we'll see what I will do <laughs> I haven't decided yet but I will show you the the independent round and then while I'm working on it I will decide how I will do <laughs> because I know it's it's one thing to to fasten off the corners but it can be tricky if you're not used to it like hiding it on the back and then continue over with another color I'm not trying to scare you here because it looks lovely uh, the way it was designed. It was just when I tried it with the solid color, I just thought to myself, how can I do this without breaking the yarn? So I don't have to do any ends. <laughs> so, yeah, so what we will do is working this little fan into our spaces, our chain tree spaces. So what we will do is we are going to find any last double crochet placed before a corner. These are the corners. These chain three spaces are the corners. The large V's. And in that double crochet, you place a slip stitch. 
and then you are directly going into here you're skipping these three stitches that is the chain two and the double crochet and then just work a double crochet chain one double crochet chain one until we have five double crochets in here okay with a chain one in between so just one two three four five and then chain one and then put a last double crochet in here and then slip stitch into the first double crochet of the next side so this is what it will look like if you choose to go that way okay so if you want to do work in the front loops it doesn't matter if you come from the top or underneath whatever works for you you can just simply slip stitch like this in each front loop all the way around and of course then make your first slip stitch also in the front loop so it's cohesive all the way around and then for the next round you will then be working in the the back loops of the stitches okay and the round chains and such but i think i will do as we actually designed it and work just these four corners so there we go i think it looks better I'm not sure, but it's a feeling. I have a feeling that I will like this better. So I just do it like this, snipping off the thread. And then I'll share with you quickly how one can fasten off. Because we don't want it to be bulky. So I have flipped my square. And then I'm going not in the... Why did I choose white? Sorry. Here is the, the head of the stitch. So I'm going to, can we tell it's the back loop of the stitch before that? And just go my way down into the center like that. Can tell. And then just, I split the last one so I can use the, the, the yeah, so I can use the stitch better. <laughs> It's so hard trying to explain sometimes why you do things as you do. But this is just to secure it back here. And then, as I always do, I travel to the space where I have the most yarn, where I can hide it, which is in this little fan section. So this is where I will be hiding my threads. So just go back and forth and then you're happy, cut it off. So as you can tell, this is quite neat from the front. Looks good, right? There we go. So I will do the same here. I will go through the loop of the stitch before and down here and go back up again and then going down into the fan back and forth. So do so for all four corners or go slip stitching all the way around. Your choice. And meet me up for round number 11. 11 is the next. <laughs> See you then. Okay, so now we have made our corners and I didn't remember it to be as fiddly to weave in the ends, but it took me some time. <laughs> but never mind if it's a little bit bulky, we are going to work over that section now and don't worry about it, it will be lovely, I promise. So grab your colored yarn, um, <laughs> some color. I'm working with actually the same as I did for round number nine. In the original square I switched to white but this time I think it will, will look lovely if I use the green so that's what I will go for. We'll see. Is that a bad idea? Yep. I decided it was a bad idea because then these will sunk in to, to the square so I'm changing again sorry <laughs> changing my mind. And it's getting a little bit dark here, so I'm taking help from my studio lamp. It's actually quite bright outside, but in here it's a little bit darker, and I really want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So I hope the lighting will work fine. So what I will do is doing a double crochet into the same stitch that we placed a single crochet. I'm totally interrupting myself here, 
but as I went along I noticed that the double crochet slipped next to the slip stitch anyhow so just place it in the same stitch the same double crochet that you have the slip stitch but to the right of it here and to the left of it here okay so you don't have to work it around the slip stitch just next to it in the same stitch okay you tell here it is in the same stitch but it is next to it looking like that from behind so yeah carry on Tess and then in the next stitch which is this double crochet work a single crochet work a single crochet in the chain space between and a single crochet in the next stitch single crochet in the chain space between single crochet in the next stitch and then on the top we are working a single crochet in the chain space chain one or was it two just need to double check two and then work another single crochet in there so you single crochet all the way to the top make a single crochet chain two single crochet single crochet in the next stitch and then single crochet in the chain space single crochet in the next stitch single crochet around the chain space single crochet in the next stitch and then work a double crochet into the double crochet from round number nine over the slip stitch so it look, will look like this really cute <laughs> and now we are actually working six half double crochets or a half double crochet in the next six stitches okay so one two three four five six and we have now reached the chain two space and we are going to skip that one and instead we are working a small no a large front post v stitch and what by that i mean a front post double crochet chain three front post double crochet around this little front post from the previous round okay so just make a front post chain three and then make a front post around it i'm placing mine behind or below the first one i think it looks good that but you can also place it over it depends on on what you like then you skip the next chain space and work six half double crochets over the next stitches okay so one two three four five and six and now you should be where we started so this is all you do you work a double crochet over the slip stitch into the stitch below then you work a single crochet in the stitch one in the chain space all up to the third chain space here on the top where you work a single crochet chain two single crochet then a single crochet in the stitch chain space stitch chain space stitch a double crochet into the same stitch where you place the slip stitch six half double crochets that will take you to the chain two space a front post large v stitch around the front post stitch from the previous round skip the next two and then six more half double crochets and that is the repeat so do that all the way around and meet me up for round number well okay so for round number 12 we are beginning in any chain 2 space in the corner and we are making a half double crochet chain 2 a half double crochet so one chain 2 and one there we go and then we are going to work one half double crochet in the next two stitches so one and two and then we are going to go back because that one I totally dropped. Sorry. <laughs> Redoing. There we go. And then we are going to chain three. One, two, three. And we are going to skip the next three stitches. So one, two, three. 
So around the single crochet that is placed in, where is it placed? In the double crochet. <laughs> we are making a front post double crochet, okay? So just get in and get around the stitches. The next one is over the double crochet and the third one is over the half double crochet. Like that. And then we are chaining two and skipping the next six stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six being the first front post of the large front post double crochet B stitch. <laughs> really hard to find a good name for that one. But okay, in the chain three space or around it, we are making three popcorns with chains in between. So simply do five double crochets around the chain four and five drop the lap loop from the hook and to through the first double crochet grab it again pull through and close with the chain and this is the popcorn so this is not a chain on itself it's a closing chain so we're going to chain one more to get some space in between and then we're going to repeat this two more times. So we have three popcorns in total. With a chain one in between the next two. Two. There we go. And the final one here. So easy peasy. Popcorns are quite lovely to make. Bring so much texture to a piece. There we go. And then instead of chaining one, we are chaining two. And then we're skipping the next six stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And the first half, the last, sorry, the last half double crochet of the six. Around that one, we are placing a front post double crochet and over the double crochet we're placing a front post double crochet and over the single crochet here we are placing a front post double crochet chaining three skipping the next three stitches yes one two three and then making a half double crochet in the next two. Like that. There we go. And then we just go at the same way all the way around. Okay, so what you will have to do is just a half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet into the corner chain space. Work a half double crochet over the next two stitches. Chain three, skip three. Work a front post double crochet over the next three stitches, which is the single crochet, the double crochet, and the half double crochet. Chain two, skip the next six stitches, which are all these half double crochets and the leg of the V stitch. Around the chain three, we are doing three popcorns with five double crochets with a chain one in between. Chain three, skipping the next six stitches, which is the other leg of the front post V stitch and the first half double crochets. Placing a front post double crochet around the next three stitches, half double crochet, double crochet, single crochet, chaining three, and then working, skipping the next three stitches and working one half double crochet in the next two stitches. So do that and meet me up for round number 13. Okay, so I just, I just went around all the way around and I have to say, um, this was a game, as you remember, <laughs> this is the granny square, what were you thinking game, um, or what were you thinking square game, and <laughs> when I designed this round, I knew that Jill would go like, what, but I really wanted her <laughs> to, to show me what she would do with all these crazy chain spaces <laughs> I suddenly created. We were talking here about it was time starting to really square it out properly and everything. And then I go ahead <laughs> and just do this. <laughs> it was so much fun. Um, 
And she literally just went like, what? What? <laughs> what did you think? <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> uh, I just wanted to mess with you a bit. And also it looks beautiful. Um, but this is the fun part of doing this game because you don't have to... You don't have to worry about what comes after your round. So you're quite, quite free. You, you shouldn't <laughs> be too bad to your partner because then they might stop playing with you. Uh, it's like in kindergarten. You can be a bit tough, but <laughs> don't be mean. <laughs> um, I think this was slightly mean. Slightly, just. Really mean would have been like putting a slip stitch chain over, slip stitch chain over. <laughs> And said, do something with that. I would not do that to you, Jill. I promise. But so yeah, this was my crazy round that I gave her after saying, oh, we should really start to square it out now. So <laughs> this one's for you, Jill. Definitely. So she was clever. She took it with, with a nice kick and just went and done something beautiful. So follow me to the next round and I'll show you what she came up with. So to begin this round, we are, I switched <laughs> colors again, but I'm going with the white this time. So we are doing two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets into any corner chain two space. Lots of twos here. Then we are skipping the hidden stitch, which is this one. And in the next two stitches, we work a double crochet. There we go. And now we are gonna work three double crochets around the chain three space. Like this. There we go. <laughs> what is it with me <laughs> this evening? Everything is here comes the here comes the yarn. Um, <laughs> over the next front post stitches, we are working a front post double crochet. So three in total. One front post double crochet, two front post double crochets, and three front post double crochets. Then we are going to do three half double crochets around the next chain two space. There we go. And then we are going to do a front post treble around the front post double crochet from round 11, okay? So just yarn over twice. This is really easy to find. Just go around it here like that. Then just pull through two loops, pull through two loops and pull through two loops. It's just laying there freely so it should be easy to get into and next up we are doing a single crochet front post around the popcorn a single crochet in the space between single po single crochet front post front post single crochet <laughs> front post single crochet single crochet and the front post single crochet and then we're going to do a front post treble around the other leg of the front post v stitch from around 11 so just go you can go above the or in front of the popcorn and then just play, push it to the side when you're done okay it doesn't have to be super tight it's okay it all works out look at that it just frames it so cute and then you're working three half double crochets around the chain three space two space sorry the chain two space front post double crochet over the next three stitches There we go. The trickiest part of this one was to pronounce everything right. <laughs> um, and then we are doing three double crochets around the chain three space. Working a double crochet into the next two stitches. Just double checking that. Wait, sorry, we have to frog up a bit. There is something wrong with my written pad and I have to Look over it. I think we changed things. So when you have done the three double crochets in the chain three space, 
you are skipping this double crochet and working a double crochet in each of the next two stitches okay so skip the first and then doing the remaining two so this is how it should look zoom in a bit you have two double crochets chain two two double crochets skip the hidden stitch double crochet in the next two three double crochets around the chain three a front post double crochet over the next three stitches three half double crochets around the chain two space front post treble around the front post double crochet front post single crochet single crochet front post single crochet single crochet front post single crochet front post treble around the other leg here three half double crochets around the chain space three front post double crochets three double crochets around the chain three space skip the next stitch which is the first here and then work a double crochet in the two next ones okay you can do it so go ahead and then get ready for the trickiest round of the entire square okay hi so are you ready we are getting closer to the end it's only three rounds to go and then we are finished with our lovely lovely little square and as i said to jen this is the trickiest one yet so fingers crossed that you will be able to get to the end <laughs> i'm just kidding uh, this is a really straightforward one uh, jill laughed so hard i said it would be the trickiest one and then i send her two double crochets chain two two double crochets in the corner and then one double crochet in each stitch across so if you were worried about this one please don't <laughs> you can you can relax i have not done anything weird here at all um, this is a really just building kind of round because as i as i said then sometimes you need to even though you have had so much fun designing wild and crazy <laughs> things throughout the square you have to know when <laughs> when it's time to start doing boring build on rounds so it's not boring it's it's relaxing she said uh, and i i couldn't agree more so this is all you will do you will just go ahead and work a double crochet into each stitch across and then yeah do a corner and then continue on so just do that and meet me up for round number 15 okay so round number 15 is what you'll call still a bit calm but with a final touch of something <laughs> so we are simply going to work half double crochets across in the back loops of our previous round and then touching down into these front post double crochets from round 13 with treble front posts so but we'll get there when we get there so i have chosen to reattach the gold just to to bind it off here nicely so it just don't sit in the middle and this one i can show you why because on the original squares you can tell this is the line that we are making now and this these three bars too so if you want to you can do this in the same color i think i will actually switch so i will have gold here and here and then i will have white or something up here but you can do what you want to it's fun to just play around and try it out i might even frog it and redo it we never know until you have tried so but i like the idea of it so start in any corner chain two space sorry went ahead a little bit quicker there <laughs> and work two half double crochets chain two two half double crochets into that space if it lets you <laughs> and then we are gonna work a back post half no not a back post a back loop half double crochet into the next 10 stitches even the don't miss the hidden one here so i work <clears throat> excuse me I work through the back loop that is here and also the loop that sits right behind it which is the third loop so it gives it a little bit more stability and don't pull away too much from the stitch otherwise this could go haywire right up 
but that is a matter of taste. I just, I like it nice and tight um, on the back. So let's see, two, three, four, five, it depends on what, what look you want. If you want it to be a little bit more compact or if you actually want it to be a little bit looser and yeah, soft. So either go with only the back loop or the back loop and the third loop as I do. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Is that correct? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes. So we are ending in the double crochet that is placed in the front post double front post double crochet. So yarn over twice and go down and finish your front post. So pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. And do that for the other two. Just one, two, and three. And one, two, and three. And then we are skipping the stitches behind. So one, two, three. And then in the next 12 stitches, work a back loop half double crochet. So just Go ahead, I'm on three, four, no stress here. Do it in your own time and pace. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. And when you have done the 12th half double crochet, you should be in the double crochet or next to the double crochet that was placed in the first of those three. And just skip it and go down and make a front post treble crochet. So, and the same goes for the other two. So quite, whoops, an uneventful round I was going to say. I didn't slip up until I was thinking about slipping up. Okay, there we go. Don't be happy before you pass the river or what do they say. So skip the next three, one, two, three. And then in the final 10, do a back loop half double crochet. And that is how calming it should be. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. I'm sorry, I took it, I said the wrong thing. Okay, so for this side, we are doing two half double crochets, chain two, two double, half double crochets, and then we work 10 half double crochets across before doing three front post trebles around the front post double crochets. Then we do 12 half double crochets in the back loop, three front post trebles around the front post double crochets from round 11, 13, 13, sorry. Uh, and then we are working a back loop half double crochet in the next nine stitches. So I one stitch short here comparison to this one. And it's all right, it should be like that. So don't worry about it. So do that for each side and meet me up for the final one, okay? Well done. It's just gorgeous outside. It really is the very last light is coming through the trees. And so I will have to use a little bit more light of my studio lights but oh, gorgeous so what we'll do now is working two half double crochets 
into the chain two space, chain two, and then work two more half double crochets into the same chain space. There we go. It's getting large now, <laughs> trying to find a way to best show you here. There we go. So we are going to work a half double crochet in the back loops of the next 12 stitches, including the hidden one. So don't skip that one. So just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and the last one, twelve. So it should end in the last of the half double crochets that you did the previous round, okay? And then we're going ahead and doing a, a front post double crochet around the front post treble and the next two as well. And here it is really important. You want this last round to have a straight edge. And if we turn this, you can tell that mine is pretty darn straight without any blocking. If you find that this is risen above your row, switch it out to front post half double crochets just to lower it a little bit. But be careful because if it's just enough that you do like this, don't change anything, okay? But you might have to adapt. It depends on how your tension is. So if it's too tall, do these ones smaller, or if it's too small and it sunks in, do a bigger, okay? It should be as straight of a line as you can. And then in the next 12 stitches, we work a half double crochet in the back loops. And the third loops, <laughs> if possible. And if you're going for that look. So there we go. I'm absolutely smitten. I think I have said this a few times now, but I'm absolutely smitten in this colorway. And I also love the first one a lot, but I think this one is my favorite or maybe the solid colored one. It's just, the solid colored one is just a dream, a creamy dream. And it's huge because I used a size four millimeter hook for that one. And it's a bit chunkier, so love it. May, might have to do something with that. So we'll see. Now you should have 12 half double crochets in the back loop. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And then we are back to our front posts and do a half double, no, sorry, a double crochet front post around your front post treble. So front post double crochet, nothing else. And then we are going into the back loops and making a half double crochet in the back loops of the next 11 stitches. We are one short on this side, but it doesn't matter. It's part of the pattern. Don't worry about it. So we have, you can think 12, 3, 12, 3, 11. That is the code, the numbers code for this round. And then of course, two, two, two in the corner. So two half double crochets in the corner, chain two, two half double crochets. And yeah, I, I went ahead to start on the next <laughs> side here, but this is what it will look like. And just finish all the way around and meet me up to close and some final thoughts, okay? Just like that, we are finished. Thank you so much for joining me throughout this tutorial. I hope you had a blast and um, maybe laughed a few times and thought, what the heck were they thinking? <laughs> I know that we sure did, me and Jill. So don't forget to subscribe, put a thumb up, maybe leave a little comment and turn on the notifications. All the information, new patterns everything is coming up every month and you can find even more over at our homepage 
sistersinstitch.com. So until next time, take care and see you soon.